man who plays the bazooka, and that's Bob Burns. And here's the Bob Burns Show starring the man who loves that draft. Well, thank you, folks. Thank you. I know a lot of you people wondered what happened to me. Of course, I've been in the hog business ever since I got off the radio, but I had to give it up out there. You know, it's uh, San Fernando Valley's kind of filling in out there. A lot of houses being built. And, <laughs> and uh, you can't raise hogs and families in the same neighborhood. <laughs> That's what they say out here. It's the California laws. I don't like those kind of laws. They, in fact, it's tough on a man raising hogs in the first place. The laws of this country out here of California say that you have to have a separate building for the hog. <laughs> and it, 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 it runs into money. I was going to... Re- <laughs> you know, you know something? I want to be honest with you people, and also you, Shirley and George and Bill, all the rest of you on the show here. I didn't tell you this, but I had it in my mind I wanted to retire. I wanted to, you know, kind of get... fella gets kind of tired working 30 minutes every week, and... <laughs> I thought I'd rest up, and... Uh, but I want to tell you... I want to tell you this retiring business just ain't what it cracked up to be. I didn't enjoy my time. I'd wake up in the morning, I had something to do, and I never did anything. When you're... If you want... Papa always said, if you want to get something done, get a busy man to do it. Well, that was me. I didn't have anything to do, and I told my wife, I says, the other day, I says, you know, I'm just a worn out. I says, that's 40 out there. The dirt was hard. We haven't had any rain. I says, I says that's a tough job plowing that 40. And uh, she says, well, I was just looking out there this morning. There hasn't been a, a, a piece of dirt turned over at all. I, she says, it ha- hasn't been an inch of it plowed. I says, I know I've been turning it over in my mind. <laughs> But I was gonna I was gonna retire, that's a fact. I was I was gonna just take life easy and and it got so that that, that uh, well I got kind of bored. You don't enjoy time as I said, you don't enjoy the time that you have off. And finally, to settle the whole thing, just the other day I had a dream. And well I dream in the daytime too. <laughs> I, this night I had this dream. I dreamed that I died. And when I woke up, I was in the most beautiful place I ever saw in my life. It was just nothing but beautiful green fields, just about everything I'd ever dreamed of. And there was a man standing there with a robe on next to me. And uh, so he says, well, you've had quite a sleep. He says, I thought maybe you might be hungry. He says, I've been told to tell you that you can have anything you want. So I sat there and ordered a meal, everything that I ever wanted, and... Uh, so I says, have you got any, uh, got any fishing around here? He says, yes, right through that arbor. There you'll see a lake. I went through the arbor, and there was the most beautiful lake I ever saw with fishing rods in a case, and, and went out and never caught so many fish in my life, and great, big, beautiful fish. And I says, have you got any golf here? He says, oh, it's a wonderful golf course. Went out and played golf. Well, it went on that way. Horses to ride, everything in the world a man could possibly wish for. And finally, after I'd been there for several weeks, I said, look, I'm getting kind of bored with this thing. And I says, I, I want a little something to do. And he says, I'm sorry, brother, but uh, that's the only thing we can't give you. He says, there's just nothing to do. And so I went on. Next day I went to him. I says, I've been thinking of this thing. but haven't got anything to do. I says, you know, I believe I'd rather be in Hades. He says, where do you think you are now? <laughs> Well, now, I'll tell you something. I, I often wonder, when I, when I think of, uh, when I see my wife out here, she does the housework. When I see her, the, the ease with which she uh, washes her dishes, and, and the, beautiful, the beautiful job she does of it with, with just no effort at all, it, it, uh, I often think how wonderful it is and how fortunate you women are to be living in this age. Well, I, I guess most of you have used that wonderful dress. If you haven't, you certainly should try it. I was just telling my wife the other day, what a difference it is. When I went by, I do the dishes a lot of times at my house. I'm not ashamed of it. 
my boys do the dishes. Everybody but my daughter. And, <laughs> and, and you know, I was telling my wife the other day, I, what a difference it is now and when I was a boy. I'm a little older than a lot of you people, I guess. But I remember when the only soap we had of any kind to do everything with was the soap Grandma used to make in the backyard. Well, she'd cook down this fat, and then she'd use a lot of lye, and she made this black lye soap. And that's the only soap we had. That's the reason why the bathing on Saturday nights came into effect. You couldn't take but one bath a week. It'd take a week for the skin to grow back. <laughs> Now you know the you know this uh, you you uh, you just remember that the next time you use some of that wonderful dress, you know all you have to do is just put it in the water and you wash the glasses and rinse them. The hotter the water is, you rinse them in the better, and then you just set the glass up and let it drain itself, and it will come out so sparkly, it'll look just like crystal. I'll never forget. I just wish we'd had dress back there. At home, am I talking too much? <laughs> I say that, Robert. Huh? No. no, I wouldn't say that. Well, I remember, uh, I don't know what you people are hired That's for here. That's not too long about draft, you know. <laughs> Boy, I'm telling you. But you know, you know, this is one thing that I, you people all are so friendly, and I just feel like if I can help you, I'm only too glad to do it. <laughs> and I remember when, uh, when these people came back there, back home, back in Arkansas, to visit us, and, and they, had, they had gotten literature that we had sent out and everything about the sparkling water. Arkansas has, without a doubt, the most beautiful water, the finest springs up in my part of the country, up in the Ozarks. The water comes out cold and just crystal clear, and it's wonderful. Look at me. I mean, I was raised on that stuff. You don't, <laughs> you don't see anything wrong looking with me. It's under the surface, but, but anyhow... Anyhow, these people from the city came down there, and they were staying at our house, and, and at Aunt Boo's house, rather. And so Aunt Boo had the water around in the glasses all around the table. And that was way back there, you understand, uh, before dress came out. And she was using some of that soap at home. And you know, this old soap, the ordinary soap that you use, leaves a film on the glass, no matter how much you wash them. And when you dry them, then they, all they do is just push the... Just push that film around, and you know germs breed in that in that uh, film. And you go pushing those germs around, and boy, they don't like to be pushed around. <laughs> They're going to come back at you. Now I'm telling you. But anyhow, as I was saying, uh, she set the glasses all around the table, and uh, so uh, so I, Uncle Fudd happened to speak up and says, "Well, what do you think of our country?" And this city lady says, "Well, I, it's just delightful." She says, "The most beautiful country I ever saw." But she says, there's only one thing I'm disappointed in, and that is the water. And she says, the water is cloudy. And of course, Aunt Boo says, I can't understand that. Why, let me see. And she went around and picked up the lady's glass and held it up to the light. And then she started to laugh. She says, the joke is on you, lady. She says, that water just as clear as a crystal. It's the glass that's dirty. <laughs> but now, now then, I'm a... Uh, uh, I, you understand, of course, I think I've said enough about drift. You, I, if I haven't, I'll come back at you again in a minute. Now, what have we got? Uh, George, you got a little something you can play here while we're getting the show together? I think we have a song called The Big White Horse. got a real cheerful song. Oh, Shirley Ross. I feel can you really think? cheerful. Oh, that's a wonderful. It is a wonderful world, too, folks. Are you ready? Yes, it's a big white wonderful world you live in when you're in love you're the master of all you survey you're a gay Santa Claus there's a brave new star-spangled sky above you when you're in love you're a hero a Nero Apollo the wizard of Oz you've a kingdom power and glory the old old oldest of stories is new you're wrong in just one day. Life is mystic. A midsummer night you live in. A Turkish delight you're in heaven. It's so well when you're really in love. You've a kingdom, power and glory. The old, old, oldest of stories is new. You've built your room in just one Turkey 
wish tonight you're in heaven It's well when you're really in love Now, oh, thank you. Thank you, folks. <laughs> I know. You know, the, I like the, doing a show like this. I think this is absolutely wonderful. It sure is. I'm, not, I'm glad you think so, too, out there. I can see that you do. <laughs> I wasn't checking up on myself. I, I quit that a long time ago. I remember I used to go around and give lectures, you know. Give, uh, I thought they were very good. And uh, charge for it. <laughs> and I go around giving these lectures, and so I, uh, one night, I thought I'd sneak out the back door real quick and pull my hat over my eyes and turn my coat collar up, and I was standing in the lobby. As the people went out, I wanted to hear the comments. The first person that went by me was a very fine-looking gentleman and his wife, and she was glaring at him. And just as they got to me, she looked at him, and she says, You would come. That's the, that's the one time. <laughs> the other time, but I... What do you do when they lay there? Pick them up? And go <laughs> but anyhow, uh, but the people have been so wonderful to me all through the years. We work together so well. I've stood up here and laid them, and you've sat out there and cackled at them. <laughs> but, right. but anyhow, there's another time... Oh. Well, I was just going to tell you, Charlie, this time, I think I told you about this one before, but my first picture, I thought it was the greatest thing in the world. It grown in Chinese. It opened with a big flourish, and so I was leaning up against, you know, they got a wishing well out there in front of the, uh, in the foyer, and people drop pennies in there and make a wish, and I was there hiding behind this well, you know, to hear the comments of the people. A man came up, threw a penny in the well, and he says, I wish you hadn't seen the picture. <laughs> Play, weren't you going to play a, a bazooka number or something? Didn't I hear you? I am going to. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I am. Uh, George, what can we whip together here? Uh... We can whip either. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you, I'd better... I'd better stand up for this, I think. It goes a little bit better when I stand up for it, so... You go ahead and play a nice introduction, and I... Yes, say, I'm, there's something I fail. Thank you, Margo. Margo, the girl with the bossy voice is Margo. <laughs> now, you know, I neglected to tell you a while ago that, uh, about how this, how this, uh, uh, you mothers, I know that every time you send the kids off to school, I know you're just like my wife, 
You, you be sure that they have their lunch if they take their lunch. I always took lunch because I had to go so far. By the time I got back home, I forgot all I'd learned that day. <laughs> but you're so, so particular about the children and you're so particular about the health. But I want to tell you, you'll feel a lot easier in your mind if you use drift. You know that that film, can I say scumbill? You know it isn't on the glass, and you'll find it that way when you have to wash with a lot of soaps. With most soaps, you'll find this film on the glass. You won't find it if you use drift. Bill, have you got some flowery words you can say in case I forget something wonderful? About a hundred choice ones here, Robin. You see, folks, public health authorities, doctors, have proved this important fact. Even dishes that look clean to you, to me, may have a film that harbors germs, germs that can spread sickness through a family. And wiping won't remove this film. In fact, wiping smears the film and the germs around. But Draft never leaves any germ-breeding film. Draft washes dishes sparkling clean, healthfully clean. So wash your dishes in thick, billowy Draft suds. Rinse them in hot water, the hotter the better. Then let them drain dry. Dishes washed in draft dry cloudless, crystal clear. They shine even without wiping. Those dishes are helpfully clean. Thank you, Bill. I was just sitting here looking out at the audience, and of course there are more women than, are, than men in the place. And it, whenever I work in the daytime like this, I just want to see the men out there, all prosperous looking, fine looking men, and I wonder what kind of a job you got, man. <laughs> That you, can, that you can come here and, and uh, you know, in the daytime, in the afternoon. Let, let me in on it. I'd like to get a job like that. I, I would, I'd like to know, what, uh, I'd like to know what, you, what you do for a living. Now, there's, there's a gentleman back there with the dark glasses on with the green collar. He's got a sunburn. This is not the first afternoon he's been away from his job. What the, will you come up? Could I? Could you come up and? Could I ask you? Okay. Let him come, huh? Somebody. Here's another gentleman with glasses. No, not I know I'm talking about you. It's a lady. But... That's one. So, as long as you're so nice about it, come right up here and lean against the mic. Hold on to it if you're going to get scared. There's nothing. Nothing to get scared of. It's awfully nice of you to come up here, but I'm just wondering. I you, I mean, I'm just wondering what kind of a what kind of a job you have uh, that you could work here. If you got a what kind of work you do? Uh, right now, nothing. <laughs> you don't do anything. No. Mm-hmm. Well, you have some kind of a line of work, don't you? Or have you? No, nothing. You, nothing. No. <laughs> How long is this wonderful condition been going on? <laughs> did you... Well... Well, you did have a job. Don't yeah. Tell me um, you... Oh, a while, a while back I had a job. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that, that, that's good. I'm glad you... <laughs> what, what kind of work, if it's any of my business? <laughs> well, the um, last job I had was um, working for a, a vacuum cleaning company. That's well, a pretty good job, too. Yeah, that's... Uh, that, I know. I sold it myself. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know, I sold them myself, and that's, that's pretty good. You're not, uh, you're not working at that now. Didn't you like to work? Yeah, I worked a uh, week, week and a half, two weeks. <laughs> Say, that's what you call growing up with a company, ain't it? <laughs> a week and a half you work. <laughs> then you appreciate me being tired. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, I would like to know. I don't want to be personal, you understand. I appreciate you coming up here, but just... Just how did you, uh, didn't you like, if you like the work, why aren't you working now? Well, um, uh, I had a, a kind of a psychology worked out on this vacuum cleaning deal. Yeah. You know, when you, you go up to the house and knock on the door of the vacuum cleaner, your hand, these women won't let you in. No, I know that. So, uh, I used to drive up and leave the vacuum in my car, and then I'd go up and knock on the door and, and, uh, get an interview that way, you see, and I'd get inside and, and I'd talk to these women and get their old vacuum cleaner out and demonstrate for that, and then and I showed him how bad it was, and I said, now, wait a minute, I've got a good one I'm going to show you, and I go back out in my car and get the vacuum oh, cleaner. Oh, oh, yeah, that's a sneaking idea. <laughs> <laughs> Worked out pretty good, too. 
Yeah, but look, if it worked out good, I mean, what I'm trying to get at, why aren't you working now? Why oh. did you give it up? Well, uh, one time I went up to a woman's house, knocked on the door, and got this interview and went inside, and while I was in there talking to her, her husband came home, and I didn't have any vacuum cleaners. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, well... <laughs> oh, man, well, well, look, it, I, don't, I don't quite get the... Are you married? Yeah, mm-hmm, I'm married. Mm-hmm. Does your wife work? Well, uh, yeah, she... Uh, uh, we kind of got a, a working agreement, you see. Uh, when I'm not working, uh, she goes out and gets a job. Oh, <laughs> May I interrupt again, Robin? Yeah. I think maybe our audience would like to hear about our sponsored product. Is it time already? <laughs> well, I declare I didn't know it was I didn't know it was time to uh, to to of course there's nothing in the world I'd rather do than uh, than talk about the sponsor's product. There's one thing, though, that uh, I... The thing that gets me is why you have to... When you have such a wonderful product, the thing is why you have to keep telling the people all the time because it's... You you would... You people, all you have to do is just use this product once. That's all. That is spick and span. That's for your floors. That lady over here says, oh, yes, she has used it. I know that most of you have. Uh, But... uh, you know that it is without a doubt the easiest thing. You take you husbands that that uh, listening in, and you husbands here. If your wife doesn't have spick and span, for goodness' sake, go out and get it because because uh, we're the ones that have to do the floors. Now I'm telling you that's that's right. I uh, I, I do a lot of the work around the house, and and this spick and span there's nothing will clean a floor like spick and span, and it's so easy to apply, and it's good for. Uh, well, it's good for the woodwork. It's good for almost anything. The furniture. You know how the kids scuff up the uh, how they scuff up the the baseboards with their feet, uh, and you put it on the on the linoleum, and it just and go over it, and it just shines just as. Oh, it's the most beautiful job, and it's so easy. That's the part I like about it. It's so easy to do. Bill, you don't uh, uh, the spick and span. You don't you. Get, you, you, I, you see, I'm not educated. I, there's a lot of this. There's a, there's a lot of this. Uh, the words here. The only thing I know is just the actual practice. The, how how nice it is to use. But when it comes to the flowery words, we've got an elocutionist on the show here. Bill, go ahead and elocute. For <laughs> well, believe me, you'll find spick and span clean so much faster. Does such a perfect job. You'll want to use it not just for linoleum, but for everything else that you clean: woodwork, walls, porcelain, tile, finger marks around the light switches. Kick marks, you know, on the stairs and the baseboards. No soap, no other cleaner. Nothing in America cleans like spick and span. So get a box today. For extra economy, get the big new household size. Robin, would it bother you terribly if I sang another song? Well, Shelley, you know, I've always... That's the only reason... Would you, you mind? Well, you don't think I've had you on the show for you years know, to entertain I'm... the people, do you? <laughs> <laughs> there's one I'm just crazy about. Uh, uh, cruising down the river. Do you like that one? Oh, you that's like a that? wonderful song. Cruising yeah. down the river on a Sunday afternoon With one you love the sun above Waiting for the moon The old accordion plays a sentimental tune Cruising down the river on a Sunday afternoon the birds above all sing of love, a gentle, sweet refrain. The winds around all make a sound like softly falling rain. Just two of us together, we'll plan a honeymoon. Cruising down the river on a Sunday afternoon. Do a whole part, not a whole part. Down 
Shelly, I don't know. I got quite a thrill in sitting around here looking at you there. Where you used to not only sing beautifully, but uh, but I couldn't help. Uh, yeah, you know, your hair looks so pretty today. It's, it's got that green, and, I tell you. And it looks so soft, and yet it looks springy, you know, so that it, <laughs> you know, it stays in place, and you can tell it, uh, it, it well, I don't know, it, it just looks wonderful. I can't put it in flowery words. But, you know, Shirley, you were singing a song. You're not the only one that sings, you know. No? No. Have you any plans? <laughs> I have a very sneaking plan here. <laughs> for this program? For this show right here. You mean right now? Wait a minute. We've only got... Well, that's all right. We've got... Uh, 30 seconds. We've only got 30 seconds, but <laughs> I'm going to do it anyhow. <laughs> what so are you going to do? Then we can cut it. Oh, yeah. Uh, sure, we can cut it. Oh, sure. I thought... But anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this thing. If I haven't got room for it, I'm going to... I, I, what's the use of studying for years? <laughs> and then not being able... I'm not going to hide my light under a bushel. <laughs> no, you know, uh, it scares me sometimes when I think that uh, a lot of you don't know it, but, you know, I come pretty near being a hillbilly. <laughs> and, and I wrote a number back there. I wrote a number. They called I, write, I wrote my wife a letter, boy. And I think it's a pretty thing, and I, I compose it myself, words and music. Not only that, I play the guitar while I sing it. You people listening in, I want, I want credit for everything here. <laughs> I wrote my wife a letter, boys, the first in 20 years. I wrote my wife a letter, boys, I filled it full of tears. I said I'm tired of trying my fortune fur to win. And now at last all that I ask is to see your face again. I've neglected you ever since the day I went. I'd like to send you money now, but I haven't got a cent. But just to make you happy and prove my love is true, a check for a thousand kisses I'm enclosing now to you. She sat right down and wrote her letter I have read. And I admit I didn't get a lot of things she said. She says, I got your letter with check-in clothes, okay. I gave it to the Iceman and he cashed your check today. <laughs> Sorry, time to say goodbye, you know. Time to... Well, folks, I had so much to say. Well, we'll just have to say it tomorrow. That's all. Thank you, folks, for coming. Thank you for listening. Good night. There goes that man with the bazooka, Bob Burns. But be with us Monday through Friday at the same time for the Bob Burns Show. Brought to you by the makers of Draft. Draft.